known for its rich commercial and cultural heritage, India has been home to some of the oldest civilizations in the world, such as the Indus Valley Civilization. The last five decades have seen India evolving from its culturally rich image to one of the fastest growing economies of the world. The country has shown substantial development in the agricultural, industrial and technological sectors. In addition to this, India has also contributed significantly to world history. From the ancient times of the Indus Valley Civilization, through the British rule, to free India, the country has witnessed it all. Let's learn a little more about this country that is emerging as a fascinating blend of culture and technology. We'll start by locating India on the world map. As you can see, India spreads across both the eastern and the northern hemispheres. India's latitudinal stretch is between 8.4 degrees north and 37.6 degrees north and the longitudinal stretch is between 68.7 degrees east and 97.25 degrees east. A study of the map shows that the Tropic of Cancer at 23.30 degree north latitude cuts across the country, dividing it almost into two equal halves. Did you know the Tropic of Cancer is the northernmost latitude at which the sun can appear directly overhead at noon? Coming down, beyond the mainland, the country extends further to the south. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are the extensions of India in the southeast and the Lakshadweep Islands in the southwest. So, you see that India is a big country. But exactly how big? What is the country's area? The total area of the Indian land mass is 3.28 million square kilometers. This accounts for nearly 2.4% of the total land area of the world. If you compare India's size to that of other countries, India is the seventh largest country in the world. Now, let's focus on the outline of the country in the map. Let's see if you can make out the natural features bordering the country. As you can see, Young Fold Mountains cover the northwestern, northern and northeastern borders of the country. The total land boundary of India measures 15,200 kilometers. Starting from 22 degrees north latitude, down towards the south, India is bordered by the Bay of Bengal in the east, the Arabian Sea in the west and the Indian Ocean in the south. In fact, the tapered shape of southern India divides Indian Ocean into the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. India's total coastline, including the outlines of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands, measures 7,516.6 kilometers. Did you know the southernmost tip of India, called the Indira Point, got submerged under the sea in the tsunami that struck the country in December 2004. Now looking at the map, can you identify which extent is larger? The east-west stretch or the north-south stretch? The east-west stretch of India looks smaller than the north-south stretch. 
However, if you actually measure the distance, both measure the same, approximately 3000 kilometers. It is this huge distance of 3000 kilometers that causes a lag between the local times at the eastern and the western ends of the country. Let's discuss a scenario to understand the concept of time lag. It is 6 p.m. in the evening in Gujarat, where you live. Suppose you are talking to a friend in Arunachal Pradesh. Your friend mentions that he is standing at the window watching a beautiful sunset. However, if you look around you, it is still broad daylight for you. How is it that it's still daylight in your city? While the sun has already set where your friend lives in Arunachal Pradesh. This happens because of the huge longitudinal expanse of the country. There is a huge distance between the eastern and western end points of the country. This leads to a time lag of two hours between the local times of the two places. However, in practice, the clocks in both locations will show the same time. Because the entire country follows a standard time. India's standard time is the time along longitude 82.30 degree east. This longitude passes through Mirzapur in Uttar Pradesh. This longitude is referred to as the standard meridian of India. While India's longitudinal stretch gives rise to a time lag between the east and the west, its latitudinal stretch influences the duration of days and nights. For example, the duration of days and nights is the same in Kanyakumari, which is on the southernmost tip of India. However, as you move northwards, the duration of days and nights begins to vary. Now, let's look at India's location in relation to other countries on the map. Can you make out from the map in which part of Asia India is located? As you can see, India lies to the south of Asia and is centrally located between East and West Asia. The Deccan Peninsula in the south of India protrudes to the south, thereby extending the Indian boundary into the Indian Ocean. Thus, India acts as a southward extension of the Asian continent. India is very strategically located in the center. The Trans-Indian Ocean routes connect it to Southeast and East Asian countries in the east and to African and European countries in the west. Did you know the opening of the Suez Canal in Egypt in 1869 has reduced India's distance from Europe by approximately 7,000 kilometers. It connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Indian Ocean. India's long coastline has added to its means of contact with the rest of the world through the sea route. In fact, India has a longer coastline than any other country in the Indian Ocean. It is because of India's important position in the Indian Ocean that the ocean is named after India.
However, in general, the land routes have been more popular than sea routes and frequented by travelers and traders. In fact, in ancient times, before the sea routes were explored, traders used passes in the mountains to travel in and out of India. Did you know? The Silk Road passing through India is an extensive network of trade routes connecting the East, West and South of Asia to the Mediterranean world, including North Africa and Europe. The Silk Road was a significant factor in the development of great civilizations in China, India, Egypt, Persia, Arabia and Rome. Now let's examine how India's strategic location contributed to its development and enabled it to contribute significantly to the world. Traders have been using both the land and sea routes passing through India to exchange ideas as well as commodities. For example, ancient scholars took ideas from epics like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to the world through these routes. Commodities like spices and muslin were also exported through these routes. Some other significant contributions that India shared with the world through these routes include Stories from the Panchatantra Mathematical basics such as Indian numerals and the decimal system. Interestingly, the Western world commonly refers to the Indian numeral system as the Hindu Arabic numeral system because it reached Europe through the Arabs. The image shows a clock in a park in the Arabic town of Satwa with Indian numerals on its face. Just as these routes helped India to reach out to the world with its ideas and commodities, they also enabled Western influences to reach India. You can see shades of Western influence in Indian architecture. For example, domes, minarets and Mughal tombs of sandstone and marble are all based on Persian designs. This is the Ujjayanta Palace, a former royal palace situated in Agartana, the capital of Tripura. Can you identify which culture the sculpture represents? The sculpture in the Ujjayanta Palace represents Greek influence in India. To conclude, you can see that trade routes through the land and sea played a key role in the intellectual and architectural development of India. And all this was possible only because of India's strategic location on the map.